two. Welcome back, WNST, Towson, and Baltimore, and Baltimore positive. Nothing more Baltimore positive than coming home from Los Angeles and dealing with Thanksgiving and the Turkey Bowl. I, you know, I thought it was more than 100 years old. It's kind of crazy, but this is the 100th year for the Loyola Calvert Hall game. Here to talk about it, I know I'm going to get some 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 uh, some trouble on the other side of this thing, but the Calvert Hall side. Frank Kelly joins us now. Frank's been my friend for, oh, I don't know, going on two decades or thereabouts as long as Calvert Hall's been dominating Loyola. Right, Frank? Well, thanks, Nestor. And uh, it's exciting rivalry, Calvert Hall, Loyola, 100 years in a row, 100 consecutive years, longest-running Catholic high school football rivalry in the country and a lot of great tradition on both sides. And, you know, Calvert Hall's had their way in a way. They've won, I think, 9 of 10. But before that, Loyola had won 11 straight. So it, uh, the pendulum tends to swing, and this year's uh, suiting up to be a great game. Uh, both teams, uh, Loyola's coming in like 9-1, and one, Calvert Hall's 8-3. Um, could go either way, but it'll be a great game and a great celebration of tradition and excellence. All right, so the first one I went to was back when City played Poly. I covered the 1985 or 86 Turkey Bowl Day at Memorial Stadium. So I think the first two or three I went to were out there, and now we're downtown, and obviously City Poly has gone the other way. I live downtown on Thanksgiving Day to see people come down. It's such a part of both schools, and... For Thanksgiving, the rest of us is waking up, having turkey, whatever our thing is. But anyone associated with Calvert Hall or Loyola, this this is the holiday. It's not an essential part of the holiday. It is the holiday, right? <laughs> well, it's a big part. It's a great way to start the day. And, you know, my for my family, it's been a big part of our life since 78. I was a public school kid, ended up going to Calvert Hall in 1978, got recruited by Coach Augie Maselli, who, who, caught, who taught at Calvert Hall 60 years, passed away in June. Incredible man, incredible coach. I Think of the great coach on the Loyola side who coached against me and my brothers and my sons, Joe Bruin, uh, 35 years as a coach. You think about the influence of a coach. But when I played and my brothers John and David played, we played down at Memorial Stadium. So what a thrill to step on that field. Where are those pictures? How are, the, how are those pictures not out this week on the 100th anniversary? Come on. Well, I think there's some here and there. I guess we got to look close. And I know a guy named Nelson Coffin, a local reporter, actually did a book on the history of the 100-year game with some incredible pictures. You know, at one point they were getting twenty five, thirty thousand to that Calvert Hall Loyola game at Memorial Stadium. When I played, it was probably about fifteen thousand, and um, you know, just the tradition to play on the, the the dirt field. And I remember picking some grass, putting it in my pocket, taking it home just as a memory. And but you know, Johnny, you played there, and all the Colt greats. You know, were in the Colts locker room. You'd alternate one year your home team, next year you're away. So both teams had a, a chance in the uh, Colts locker room and all the tradition. And the last number of years it's primarily been at m&t raven stadium but since they went to the grass turf um there's been a little more of a push to have the game played at towson university and that's where it's going to be played this year because the ravens do play at home sunday december 1st the sunday after thanksgiving they don't want to take a risk on the field being beat up you know a few days before that big nfl game what decides um, that because i know it's been out in town i mean it, it it will it come back downtown soon it's up time well you know, talking to the um, you know Dick Cass, president of the Ravens, has been great. The Ravens have been great supporters of high school football. I know they would love to see the game there, but as you know, Nestor, you might know more than I do. A few years ago, the Ravens went from turf, field turf, or astroturf, turf, we used to call it field turf, fake grass, to natural grass surface. When you have a natural grass surface, all of a sudden you get concerned about weather elements and too much play. They told us if they didn't have a home game the weekend following Thanksgiving or, you know, that weekend after Thanksgiving, sure. they wouldn't let us play the game there. So I do believe future games will be played there. But this year to Towson University, Johnny United Stadium, you know, I think it'll be sold out. Uh, we're expecting over 10,000, probably 12,000 sell out the stadium. Both sides will be full and it'll be a great day. You know, for that being the location of the game and everybody being able to get over there, if you get good weather, if you get a good matchup, but I don't think it matters. I mean, it really is. It's a homecoming, right? I mean, I remember for years when I was out at the barn back in the 90s, uh, Jimmy and Joey would always bring the Calvert Hall. The Wednesday night is literally a celebration and a homecoming for both schools and all the alums. And I'm always on the wrong side because I didn't go to Calvert Hall or Loyola. So I anger both of you when I talk about it. I mean, the Loyola guys accuse me of rooting for Calvert Hall. The Calvert Hall guys accuse me of rooting for Loyola. And the truth is I went to Dundalk, you know? <laughs> well, I think you would have been in well at Calvert Hall, Nestor. We, you know, it was a great alumni base at both schools, a lot of uh, passion and 
you know, and many of the Calvin Hall, the guys are obviously good friends. Um, it's a fun rivalry. Both schools have huge homecomings. It's kind of cool. Uh, you know, every year, you know, you have a big homecoming with over a thousand people. Now, it's not just your classmates, but you know, people from even all the decades. It's kind of fun seeing guys there from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. And, you know, and then the young guys are there. And it's just a party uh, the Wednesday night before Thanksgiving. And I know Calvert Hall's done that for many years. Loyola does the same. And lots of times there's Calvert Hall Loyola parties together before and after. So it, it's just a great reason to get together, celebrate high school football and, and a great tradition in our community. All right, we got Frank Kelly here uh, from Kelly, of course. Uh, two decades, my friend. You know him from around town in Calvert Hall. We're all getting ready for the big turkey bowl game on Thanksgiving morning. It's up at Johnny United Stadium at Towson. It's set for 10 a.m. Um, this is the part where I make the Loyola people happy because they are up 49, 42, and 8. There have been eight ties in the history of this game, huh? That many? Yeah, well, you know, going back to when the game first started uh, in the early years, uh, most of those ties came in the 20s and 30s. Uh, that, you know, there's not going to be a tie this year because they'll play until someone wins. And there's been games that have been ended in a tie in regulation and have gone to overtime. And, um, but those ties were early. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, you know, there's just been some great uh, competition. And each decade almost had a different theme and a different feel to it. Some decades were Loyola heavy. Some were Calvert Hall heavy. And usually it's pretty even, evenly matched. I know Calvert Hall is trying to catch up with Loyola. Uh, Loyola had some big runs. Um, I think they had a huge run in the 50s and then in the 90s. And Calvert Hall's had their runs as well. And, uh, you know, this year should be a great game. Frank Kelly joining us here. He's the CEO of Kelly & Associates Insurance Group and Kelly Payroll. Look, I can't talk football with you and Turkey and Thanksgiving without at least getting a little temperature on the Lamar thing for you. You know, we've seen all the writers come in. I've had Peter King on this week, and we've talked about Earl Thomas a lot this week. But from a management perspective, you run a company, I run a company. I know sometimes we get together and talk about it. The, the last 18 months for the organization to have the courage to trade up, draft Lamar, commit to Lamar, build around Lamar, not fire John Harbaugh when things looked bad last year, all of the changes from Mosley and Weddle and Suggs, we're going to see Weddle this week, and, uh, and Joe Flacco, who won us a Super Bowl, and we had parades. There's been a lot of courage shown out in Owings Mills the last 18 months to sort of get us to this point where Lamar Jackson is on the cusp of being an, a, a superstar. Yeah, it, it's been exciting to watch. I, I give the Ravens ownership, management, coaching staff incredible credit and courage. I mean, you have a Super Bowl champion quarterback in Joe Flacco, um, but they made the decision to go with Lamar, and it's been phenomenal. He's been incredible, I think, better than anyone would have thought, even as a first-round draft pick type of guy. Uh, he's been better than everyone imagined. Not only is he a phenomenal player with his athleticism, it's exciting to watch, but he's, he's a leader, and you can just watch him encourage his team, teammates. Uh, he does all the little things that I think Baltimore loves, and I, I'm, I'm grateful they suck with Harbaugh, and I give John Harbaugh credit. I mean, Here's a guy, he has different offensive coordinators every other year, and he's built a, a, a system around the athleticism of Lamar Jackson and then the other parts. So he's making everybody better. That's what he does. Every guy on that team is better because of Lamar, especially on the offensive side. And the defense has been great, too. So, exciting times in Baltimore. Well, I, I want to give you a little gratitude here because you've had me out to the FCA uh, banquet a couple times in the last five years, and I've seen Lou Holtz speak, but, but last year, yeah, John Harbaugh, and I know a little joke was made that he was on the docket to do it, and, you know, when he was being rumored literally this time last year around the holidays to maybe be somewhere else, he sort of joked about it a little bit, but then sat for an hour and told some stories about walking to the edge with the team over the last 10 years and where his mindset is. And look, you watch the press conferences. You know, John, he has grown as a person as well into this thing. And this sort of Ravens 3.0, which is what I call this reboot right. after Billick and then Flacco Harbaugh and that era to this era, uh, this 3.0 reboot, the way and you mentioned offensive and defensive coordinators, one of these two guys, either Greg or, or, or Wink, they're going to get a job, right? So he'll right. be once again churning that thing, which is what you do when you're a quality organization. But John Harbaugh said some things, and I actually ran that speech on the air at NST the week after I was at an FCA with you at, at Martin's West because I thought it was just such a great speech that John gave, but it wasn't even a speech. It was more of a psychology of where his head is from 10 years ago to now, and 
I'm not shocked that they're having the kind of success they're having. They're really firing all cylinders as a company right now, as an organization, as a franchise. Right. I, I, there's no question. And you're right. Last year's FCA bank with John was great, conversational, honest, humble, doing all those things. But, you know, as someone who runs a business, we now have over 500 people. Our top senior leaders, most have been with me at least a decade, many too, 10, 20 plus years. We have great people that are in place. I'm not worrying about it. Um, you know, to, to, to turn the way things turn and turn, and I guess some people call NFL not for long as a coach or a player, you know, and even your great players having the courage to let them go at the right time, you know, and, and to see what John's navigated is, is really incredible. But he has the support of, uh, you know, the management and, and Steve Bashotti, who's an incredible owner. We're so fortunate in Baltimore to have this leadership team, this ownership team, this leadership team, and the coaches. And then John Harbaugh does as proud as a person, what he does in the community with his time, his talent, his treasure. He's, a, he's just a great leader now. He's a man of faith, and I think he – he evidences a sense of peace to me, you know, because, you know, he has to win to survive, but he seems to have a peace about it and a positivity about it. And I just give the Ravens a lot of credit. And you know how much fun it's been, you know, probably for you as a sports caster analyst, you know, covering the team. But as a fan watching it, it's so fun. I mean, the people I'm going to the game with, we're having a blast. It's so fun watching the Ravens, and they deserve a lot of credit for what they've built. Frank Kelly here. Kelly, the business of better. You can find him out at kellyway.com. What do you want to say about Kelly? Because you guys have been here a long time. Your dad, your company, you talk about all the employees you have and the longevity of your company. And, and much like every company, I'm doing Baltimore Positive now. I started as a little AM radio show 30 years ago, and now we are what we are at on the internet. Uh, same thing with your company. Uh, you know, your dad founded it, and all these years later, you're still growing and doing things differently and better in a lot of ways. Right. Well, you know what, Nestor, you know, you know the risks you've taken along the way and you've worked hard and it hasn't been a smooth pass all the time and you haven't been perfect all the time. And the same with our story. My parents, you know, started Kelly uh, 43 years ago in the basement of our home uh, with five kids under the age of 12 and double mortgaged the house and just asked God's blessing and slowly didn't have a vision for a big business. But, you know, we're, we call it the business of better. We're trying to help make businesses better to help make a better world in the benefits, insurance, and payroll space. And we're blessed to work with many of the best businesses in Maryland and throughout the Mid-Atlantic, and even around the country. And, but, you know, it's like the Ravens, like your entity, like ours, things change. Things are constantly changing, and we need to be working hard and looking ahead and being willing to change and adjust and, and um, make investments uh, to become the best, you know, we can be. And, you know, my, my dad... Um, just celebrated 80 years. We had a couple parties for him, 80th birthday. And one of the things I'm, I'm most excited about, Nestor, really is this whole Baltimore positive. And that's, I know, one of the reasons I'm on today. I just love what you're doing and others are trying to do because there's so much going on in our, in our city and state that's positive. Including that's the Turkey Bowl. <laughs> including the Turkey Bowl. You got it. You got it. So, but, um, you know, I love the Baltimore positive and, you know, we're involved in some positive things. A big part of our business is trying to help in the community with things. And one of my favorite things we've been involved in for probably about 20 years is a, a program called the Baltimore um, or the FCA Park Heights Saints. It's a youth football cheerleading program out of Park Heights, um, founded by a guy named Garrick Williams, Coach Garrick, Brother Garrick. People call them all kinds of names. But they now have nine teams, nine youth football teams, 100% privately funded. They have about 25 cheerleaders. Um, 250-plus kids involved, over 45 coaches, all volunteers. A number of the coaches are former you know, drug dealers, former guys who had been incarcerated, coaching with current Baltimore City police officers. I mean, you've got volunteers, guys that have come out of difficult situations that are now using their experience to help kids, trying to attract kids to a football field to teach them about leadership, life, faith, and football. And, and when you see positive things like that, they often don't get highlighted at the same way some of the negative things going on in our community and our, in our state and even our nation. So I, I just love the idea of Baltimore Positive. There's a lot going on that we need to celebrate. Frank, I appreciate you. Let's celebrate Thanksgiving together. First, I, I've been asking everybody this. is What's your one essential food on Thanksgiving? I mean, I, I've been talking about sauerkraut for 30 years because it's such an east side <laughs> thing on Thanksgiving and whatnot. But, I mean, the, the turkey, the pumpkin pie, the cranberry. My wife, uh, cranberry has become one of my favorite. My mom always made cranberry, like, in a can and would, you know, pop it out. Like, my, my wife, like, actually gets the cranberries <laughs> and boils it all down. And she has this orange thing and this walnut thing. So cranberries has become my favorite thing on Thanksgiving. What's yours? 
Well, I tell you what, I'm kind of just um, pretty simple. Uh, we tend to celebrate with my wife's side of the family. Her mother's 85. She's still doing this turkey. But her her brother and I get the leg. I love a big turkey leg on Thanksgiving. I know that's weird, but that's a little my tradition, me and her. <laughs> and he's a, he's a celebrated um, Army veteran, uh, of Army Ranger, dropped behind enemy lines multiple times, incredible hero, Stephen Smith. Um, but we each get the big leg. And then I love everything that goes with it. I'm a little more of a plain meat and potato guy. It's just give me the mashed potatoes, traditional stuffing. I don't need all that fruit and stuff in it. It's a traditional stuffing. And give me a big old leg and a piece of uh, white meat. I'm happy. Love it. All right. Turkey leg. Well, you're happy at a state fair then because they serve those big turkey legs at the <laughs> state fair. So you're fine. It, it's funny, though. It tastes different there. For some, Like I go to the state fair. I don't get it. But around Thanksgiving, there's something about having that big leg on the plate, me and my brother-in-law. And, uh and the rest of the family, and, and just just enjoying it. Well, uh, enjoying we're, it. we're going to do that back from L.A., and I know you guys get up early in the morning on Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you, the whole Kelly family, your dad giving my best, and, and everybody out there, Kelly. And, uh, you know, I don't want to say go beat Loyola because that just that angers the crowd. You know what I mean? That gets <laughs> that gets the people down on Charles Street upset. Uh, yeah, so exactly. I, I'll, I will just say good weather, good fortune, good luck to Calvert Hall and Loyola, and keep the tradition going for 101. Hope to see you on the other side at the uh, maybe at the game on Sunday against the 49ers. Yep. Frank, I we'll appreciate you, man. We'll be here. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving and Baltimore positive. Way to go. Appreciate Thank the support. You. There he goes. Frank Kelly joining us here. Kelly Way is the way to find out all the stuff they do. My goodness, there's so many ways to find out about the Turkey Bowl. Uh, it's going to be up at Johnny United Stadium on Thursday morning, 10 a.m. Uh, like, I need to tell the Calvert Hall and Loyola people. But, it, you know, it's not downtown anymore. It's not Memorial Stadium anymore. So a lot of folks may say, hey, it's in Towson. Oh, I'll go over to Johnny UNC. Feel free to do so. Uh, it uh, starts at 10 a.m. on Thursday. From Los Angeles back home to turkey to stuffing and pumpkin pie and all the goodies in between, and happy Thanksgiving to everyone. I am Nestor. We are WNST.net, AM 1570, and Baltimore Positive, and we never stop telling great stories about good stuff happening in Baltimore.